God is just a prayer away. All you need to do is call. He will hear your faintest cry. He's concerned about you. So while your tears are flowing through your time of mourning, He is here to lift your heavy heart. He 
Good morning to everyone. Shall we all stand, please? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever live and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? For we brought nothing into this world, and certain we will carry nothing out. Naked came I on my, out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gives, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble. But the comfort whatsoever we ourselves are comforted in God. Good morning to everyone. We welcome you here to as we celebrate the life of our dearly beloved brother, 
the Lord said at this time that he should take him, but we want to give God thanks for the life and the time that he has spent with us. Shall we bow our hearts and pray, please? Father, this morning we want to thank you for the life and the time you have given our brother to be, to be with us. We thank you, Lord, for his life, oh God. We know that this, this shadow that continues to hover over the life of human beings which is death, which causes discomfort and pain. Jesus in John 11, 34, you said, Jesus wept. You wept because you saw the pain and the hurt and the suffering that death caused to people. So this morning, Father, I just speak to the, the family members of all their, their, their beloved brother, that you speak comfort to them in the name of Jesus, Father, because you are God of comfort, Father, and Importantly, remember those who are, who are us here this morning, who are yet here, who have time, oh God, to make it right with you. Bless this service and the pass it away, Lord, and we shall the life of our dear brother. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The song is entitled, It is Well With My Soul. and good morning to everyone. When peace like a river attendeth my way Oh 
cross is nailed to the cross and I bear no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is where Jordan, if Jordan above me shall roll, no pang shall be mine, no pang shall be for in death, for in announcement please there will be no second viewing of the body there will be no second viewing of the body we have our first scripture reading st john 14 verse 1 it says read by alison padmore good morning good morning reading let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, 
for where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here ends the morning lesson. Thank you. The song, when the world is called, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> The wondrous love of Jesus Sing His mercy and His grace In the mansions bright and blessed He'll prepare for us a place When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be the UDG by Diane Braffitt. The UDG by Diane Braffitt. You may be seated for a, short, a little while. Good morning. I am Diane, Rodney's only daughter. Rodney Leo Carter, my father, also known as Captain or Cappy, was born to Leota Carter Williams and Dudley Taylor, also known as Barrow, both now deceased on September 7th, 1944, but he celebrated his birthday on September 14th for many years. He grew up with his mother and siblings, Randall Gunga Carter, now deceased, Irma Harvey, Emerald Brenda Morgan, and Vita Drakes. My Aunt Irma said that as a boy, my father did not like school. And even though their mother would put him straight in the headmaster's hand at St. Lawrence Boys School, he would still leave to go fishing in the swamp. 
When my dad got older, he enjoyed lifting weights, riding his bicycle, fishing and crabbing. Many Saturdays and Sundays, he could be found in Oystein's market, spending time with his late sister, Carlita Jarvis. My father worked at the Ministry of Agriculture, Graham Hall, for many years. He had a stroke in 2009, and he retired. My dad was the adopted father to my brother, Rainier, my mother's first son. My dad helped raise Rainier from age four, and Rainier lived with my father up until about seven or eight years ago. My father taught Rainier how to cut lawns and clean up properly. He also gave Rene his first weed whacker. My father loved his granddaughter and always told me, buy this for the child, get the child that. He loved and respected my husband. Actually, I remember the first time I took Danny to meet my dad. He was eating Wonder World on the step and my father told him, don't mind me, I just hear chewing bush like an animal. Danny and I still laugh at this sometimes. Danny said when he asked my dad to ask to marry me, my dad smiled and told him, if you want trouble, go along. <laughs> she miserable just like she mother. I sure is advice that Danny wish she heeded. <laughs> I remember as a girl, I really wanted a bicycle, but my father said he would only buy one for me after I learned how to ride. He told me I could practice on his carrier bike. Well, if any of you in here know about carrier bike, the handle is turned, but the front stays stationary. So to say that I had many falls is an understatement. I remember trying to turn left by Mr. Gaskin and ending up well wrong, right down by Mr. Brown. And sometimes just a little bit too left into Mr. Gaskin's house. Well, I finally mastered that bike. And I was so happy to show my father. He said he was proud and anytime I needed to ride, I could use the carrier bike now. <laughs> when I told my dad I had gotten into UE, he was so happy, and less than a week later, he rode to my house in Tombray Hill to give me a laptop in a laptop bag because he was telling somebody that his daughter is going to UE, and they said that she would need one. It didn't matter that I was already working at Lightham Power and I could have afforded one on my own. My father was baptized, and he loved the Lord and church. His friend Kurt said that a week before my dad got sick, he told him, Kurt, it is time to give your life to Christ. Amen. Things ain't looking so good. Go and get saved. I have been saved and I am happy. My father was a strong, quiet, peaceful, helpful, generous, and very loving man. If he had anything, he would share with his neighbors right down to his last. He was always contented and did not let anything bother him. I would like to publicly say thanks to Kurt for always cutting my dad's hair and keeping him looking sharp. To Mr. Mears, thank you for keeping my dad's company. Linda, no words can express the gratitude I have for you. To my Aunt Irma and my cousin Chrissy, thank you for helping him even when he was difficult. Finally, I would like to say to everyone here, if you can take anything from the life of my father, is to love and serve the Lord and to always be contented because little with content is great gains. Amen. Thank you. Let's all stand as we sing the song when the role is called up yonder. trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up
Make sure that his name is written up there. Will your name be up there? We have the second reading, First Thessalonians 4, 14 to 7, by Wolfie Clark. Good morning. Good morning. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, then also which sleep in Christ will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall prevent them, shall prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Here ends the reading. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated as we have a solo by Brother Wayne Critchlow. Stay in 
the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go through the veil of woe His voice to me is calling And he walks with me My God talks with me He tells me joy we share as we tarry the dead none other has ever known and joy we share as we tarry the dead None other has ever known. God. Wonderful, Ren. We thank you. We now have the, the sermon ministered by Reverend Keith Reed. Lord bless him as he comes to minister. Praise God. Let's pray, please. Our loving Father, how we appreciate being in your presence this morning on this grand occasion. Lord, as we give you thanks for the life of Rodney Carter. We thank you for your faithfulness to receive him. And this morning as we sit in your presence and we remember his life, God, we want to thank you for him. We want to thank you for all that you have brought him through. And now that you have seen it fit to call him home, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would give those of us who are left behind peace, joy, Lord, that we may continue to make ready to be with you in Jesus' name. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. God of my salvation. <clears throat> this morning, I'm happy to be here in this Thanksgiving service. I'm here mainly because I serve in this assembly for more than 40 years in the Pentecostal assemblies of the West Indies around, around the West Indies and other places. And I thank God for the opportunity of meeting my brother if if we 
we're here this morning and say all the nice things about Rodney. And we remembered his life and all the pleasant things that cause us to laugh and joy. If we did not say that Rodney surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then all of what we would have said would have be of no value. God has given us this wonderful opportunity to become his sons and daughters and have new life in him. I just want to read a portion of scripture, yes, about two verses of scripture. From this scripture, God is declaring his character, who he is. Moses was called and used by God. And Moses spent many great times in the presence of God. And after a while, Moses said to God, God, I want to see your face. I want to see whom I've been talking to for all these years. And God said to Moses, you wouldn't see my face and live. God said, however, I want you to stay here upon this rock. And I am going to pass by. And Moses stood there on the cleft of the rock, and God passed by. We are told that Moses saw the back of God. And while God was passing by, he declared these he declared these precious words and they are the first words in the Bible where God testify himself of who he is. I'm reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 34. I'm reading verses 6 and 7. And the Lord passed before him, that is, before Moses, and proclaim the Lord, the Lord God. Lord means ruler. It means owner. The Lord, the Lord God. 
merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant, abounding in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgression and sin. By no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. God declared that he was and is a God of mercy. We all need mercy and grace must be hard. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, that we must come into, come boldly to the throne of grace where we would obtain mercy and find grace. And that is very important for us, that God is merciful. If God was not the God of all mercies, none of us would be here this morning. None of us would have the opportunity to say that we are safe, that we know the Lord. But because God is merciful, He is gracious, He is kind, we can all enjoy life. We can all call upon him today and say, God, thank you. I believe with all my heart that this is a wonderful privilege that God has given to each one of us. And we saw from the very beginning how Satan sought to take it away. How Satan sought to take the life what God is given to us away. But I'm glad this morning that he is defeated. Thank God for his love. In that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And I am not speaking to Rodney this morning. He cannot hear me. I'm speaking to those of us who are left behind. And we must face all the music 
We must face all the challenges. I want to say that to all of us this morning, regardless of who we are or who we think we are, we need God on our side. We need the mercy of God. Of course, one of the things that God said about himself is said that he was long-suffering. And all of us, or most of us in here, can attest to the long-suffering of God. God has been trying to get through to some of us for years. You see, God is of the sort that he is sovereign and he can do anything exceeding abundantly above that which we can ever think or ask. But God has given each one of us a will. And we decide, we make the decision whether we will go to hell or heaven. We make the decision of our final destination. And my brother is and sisters today we have a big responsibility to make the right decision so i'm saying that all of us have that right to decide where we want to spend eternity. And God has been talking, speaking, he has been saying, come unto me. You are weary. You are laden. You are burdened down. And Many of us, in spite of the great promises that God has given to us, we stay with the guy who gave us no promises but seek our lives. He has nowhere to take us, but we will end up with him if we do not listen to the voice of God and accept his invitation. We have an opportunity this morning. Some of you have been, you were being called for 20, 30, 40 years. I know of a gentleman who was being called for 90 years and more and he refused to respond to the great invitation of God. He died in his 90s but just before he died he called me and said, I would like to respond to Jesus. This is the long suffering that God, the long rope that God gives us. And I thank God that he is so gracious. 
He is so loving. He is so kind. That he gave a long rope. This is a man. A man that has come. A male that has come to the end of his life on earth. I want to say to all the men here today that God builds a nation on men. Men are important to God. They're important to us. If you take the blocks, if you take the prison, tell me how many ladies you can count them on one hand. But you need all your hands and your feet and somebody else's feet and hands to count the men. Because Satan has been succeeding in telling men, saying to men, you are strong. You have time. But I want to say to you, over the past few months I've been hearing, I've been hearing men that have been leaving this side of life and there have been young men who thought that they had time. We do not have much time. Men, we do not have much time. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought to say these few words because We don't have much time here either. We got to leave here in just a while. So it makes no sense for me even to begin on notes that I have made. But what I'm saying to each one of us today, regardless of who we are, how old you are, it doesn't matter me, how young you are or how old you are, I am inviting you to give Jesus, give Jesus Christ a chance in your life. Let him come in. Give him a chance. Prove that he is really real and mighty and powerful. Prove that he can change lives. When God passed before Moses, he said, The Lord. The Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering. But if we look carefully, all the good things that were said in that verse concerning the good character of God... In the seventh verse, in the middle of the verse, it says, 
that he would not let sin go unpunished. It says that he still punishes. I'm talking about the good, loving, kind, faithful, true God. He says that he will not let sin go unpunished. And in this verse where God is presenting himself and how he will deal with men comes up the three ways that we can sin against God. It's one of the only verses, one of the only places that is mentioned in the scripture. Iniquity, transgression, and sin. Sin is rebellious or rebellion against God. It is anything that displeases God that is unrighteous. We are told that transgression is stepping over the mark and iniquity is that which we crowd in our hearts malice, hatred and all such things that we the vengeance that we take out against each other and against God. And God says he was wounded for the iniquity. So there is nothing that you have done. There is no sin that you have committed. That God cannot. And God will not forgive you. Of. I don't matter how far you have gone over the mark. God can put you back in line. He can save you and change you and make you into a new creature. It doesn't matter, my brother. All the wrong things that you have done. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Jesus bore it all for us. And by his stripes, we are healed. What an opportunity. What a gift we have today. I did not say it up front. But I am not seeing you too well. But it doesn't matter. I know that you can hear me. And I know that what I am saying comes from the word of God. It is truth. Thy word is truth. And we are told to hide the word of God in our hearts. I'm going to end on this. Jesus spoke a lot of parables. And one of the parables that I get excited about, we call it the parables of the sower. But I don't call it so. I call it the parables of the four soils. 
four kinds of soils. The four kinds of soils. When the seed is thrown out, the seed is the word of God. When it is thrown out by God, some fall by the wayside. And that is loss. Some fall on rocky ground, and that is loss. Some falls in the thorns, and that is loss. But some falls on good ground. I trust that your heart on which the word of God will fall is good ground. Because the parable is, is taught and given by Jesus because everybody that come to church or in church or in the crowd listening, they really want to hear the gospel. That's why Jesus said, some would have eyes and not see. They would have ears and not hear. So, many times we preach and teach the word of God and three quarters of what we preach preach goes by the wayside, but I'm glad for those who are the word of God will change. Being, being that group where the word of God would fall on your heart, don't reject it. For it will do you good. This is the word of God. Shall we pray? Our kind Father, we love you so much. Your word, the entrance of your word brings light and life. The entrance of your word changes us into new creatures. So we thank you for your word. Let it go forth and touch that man, that boy, that girl, that young person, that older person. Lord, may it fall on good hearts today. And may they do like Rodney Carter did. Invite you into their hearts. Invite you to make changes in their lives before it's too late. Father, I ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Reverend Ray, for reminding us how wonderful our God is. We have, at this time, a prayer for the family. We ask Brother Gary Thomas to come and pray for the family. After that, we have the, the recession song, Great is Thy Favorness. Please remember, there will be no second viewing of the body. Good morning to everyone. Can I have all the family stand, please? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask each and every one to just join us in prayer for the family. Hallelujah. Father, 
Lord Jesus, we just want to give you praise and thanks, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for Brother Rodney life, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. But most of all, O oh God, he has gone with you, O oh God, because you have prepared that place for him. Lord, I lift, O oh God, all his surviving friends, his family, O oh God, especially before you, O oh God. Father, I pray that you would touch them mightily, O oh God. Lord, give them a heart of comfort. Yes, give them peace, O oh God. Yes. May they have rest, O oh God. May they, O oh God, have that comfort to know, O oh God, that he is in a better place, O oh God. Yes, and uh, Father, I pray, O oh God, as they remain here on this earth, O oh God, that you would guide them, that you would protect them, that you would cover them under your blood, O oh God. Amen. Build a hedge and a fence around yes. them, O oh God. Cause those who do not know you to come to know you as Lord and Savior, O oh God. Father, I pray that you would touch them mightily, O oh God, from the crown of their head, O oh God, to the sole of their feet, O oh God. Touch every heart, O oh God. Every heart be touched in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Lord, when they walk, O oh God, that you will guide their path, O oh God. Lord, I pray that your peace shall go before them, your peace shall comfort them and your peace shall keep them oh god yes, lord. lord i pray god that no weapons form against them shall in prosper the oh god lord we cover them under your blood yes, in the name lord, of god. jesus yes, oh god. god we pray for your direction oh god My and father we just want to give you thanks oh god Hallelujah. for them oh god and we pray oh god that you will strength for them jesus the loved name. ones oh god and every family member right now in the name of yes, jesus lord, god. Father, do it right now. In Jesus' Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness O oh God my Father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thy compassion they fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, Lord, unto me, summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature. In many witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning. New mercies I see, all I have needed, thine hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. 
pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for
For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of, out of this world the soul of our dearly beloved brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, looking for the general resurrection in the last days and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, of whose second coming is glorious majesty is to judge this world and the earth. And he shall give up, and the sea shall give up the, the dead. And the corrupted bodies, those who sleep, shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby we are able to subdue all things unto his heart, unto, him, unto himself. We shall sing the, the song in the street by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet, in the sweet by and by. Sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet, in the sweet by and by, by and by, we shall. Next song is Goodbye World. Say, I stay no longer with you. Say, I stay no longer with you. Why 
white and cloudless one and the red. And the dead in fresh and And the glory of his resurrection share. When the chosen ones shall gather with their home beyond the sky, and the road is called yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called yonder, when the road is called yonder, when the road is called yonder. Maybe I'll get you have
There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see.
Father, we let you continue to pray for the family, the relatives of our beloved brother. Father, I miss the hurt and the pain that they might be facing just now. I just pray that you will continue to speak the peace of God to their souls. Give them the assurance. I'm sure they have the assurance that one day again they will see their beloved brother over and on the other side. God, continue to give them the strength to make it true at this time. You are a God of comfort. You are a merciful God. Continue to show that love and comfort to them at this time, Father, and all the members of our family. We want to say thanks to everyone that who come and share in the life of our brother. Let your blessings fall on them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the sin of our ever Lord, ever Lord, all the same to be great. Oh. 